Kaunti Assembly of Kiambu, such POs have been raised. What did, you, what did your predecessors do? They let the jury make the determination, which is all the 47 delegations. Do not accept, Mr. Speaker, the invitation that is being passed on to you to make a determination on your own. The Constitution, nor our standing orders or legislation, never envisioned a situation where the Speaker could terminate proceedings such as this, Mr. Speaker, purely on a point of order. Therefore, I want to humbly request you, Mr. Speaker, that just as we do in legislation, let us make a determination on this PO. If it comes to voting, let it be the case, Mr. Speaker. But on your own motion, Mr. Speaker, in the interest of justice for the people of Kericho, allow us to listen to this case and eventually make a determination one way or the other. I thank you. Senator Mogheni. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, what I had my classmate, Kegan Katwa, say is to invite you to invoke standing order number 30 to make a final determination on this impeachment. It is the rules of procedure, not standing order. Okay, yeah. And uh, I think the third schedule under the rules of procedure. Mr. Speaker, my understanding is the moment an impeachment lands on the floor of the Senate, it becomes the property of the jury, who are the senators. If these proceedings were being conducted by a special committee of 11 members, Mr. Speaker, you will never be invited to make a determination on the issue of whether a two-third was reached. That decision would be made by that committee of 11. By extension also, Mr. Speaker, the right people, the right uh, person or persons to make a determination as to whether the threshold of two-thirds was reached during impeachment is the House sitting as Senate. I don't think, Mr. Speaker, you'll be setting a right president for you to take that power away from the elected senators. Council can invite senators to listen to that issue and make a determination. But I don't think, Mr. Speaker, sir, it is right for you to be asked to make that determination as our speaker. And I agree with those who have spoken before, Mr. Speaker, that precedent has been set. During the Sonko hearing, Mr. Speaker, similar matters arose before us, Mr. Speaker, on issues of quorum. But the speaker then, ruled that those issues be argued as part of the defense of Governor Sonko. And then the senators make a determination. I invite you to be extremely reluctant, Mr. Speaker, to take a seat where you will be sitting as a jury and making a, de a determination to either acquit or convict the governor for Kericho. That is a mandate reserved for us senators. Senator Robert. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, listening to both sides, uh, there's, uh, a, you know, an alleged evidence by court ruling that has been shared by the Council for the Governor, but the citation of uh, court rulings shared by the Council for the County Assembly. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, as uh, shared my, by my colleagues, uh, the, there is, a, you know, a question of common practice uh, globally and the issue uh, that deals with the issue of fraction. And then there is the law. And the matter before us is not an easy matter that can be prosecuted by making a simple decision or, for example, what you have been requested in the preliminary objection to make that of maybe, uh, in the words of the council for the governor, to, uh, on the basis of just the argument of the threshold, determine that there is no case to be had by this Senate. Uh, it is important that Senate sitting as a jury and a quasi-judicial setting to make that decision themselves 
so that it also becomes other precedent setting cases as mentioned by various colleagues of uh, mine in the House of cases, governors appearing before this same Senate. Can we, can you allow this uh, Senate to make that decision by way of voting so that it becomes also another precedent setting uh, rule rather than uh, taking the burden of making a decision that the people of Kericho are expecting, uh, uh, you know, the issue before this Senate to be really listened to and uh, adjudicated over by the entire Senate as to Senator Muma. Thank you, Honorable uh, Speaker, for giving me an opportunity to contribute to this. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I wish to support uh, sentiments by previous speakers but wish to point out a very important issue when it comes to the PO on the threshold. Mr. Speaker, I want to point out that in the past, when the threshold has been about gender, the math to surround it, to, to, to round off to below the figure has sufficed. An example, uh, a point um, uh, uh, to demonstrate this is the very county assembly of Kericho. So I wish to call upon our colleagues to take note that the Kericho County Assembly has 47 members, only 16 are women. So even as you make a decision, depending on what decision you make, we may have to nominate one more. I also wish to point out that on the, in the a bundle of evidence by the governor's um, uh, uh, team that they indicate that the speaker was appointed by 31 votes to 16. It is something you take, need to take note of. And thirdly, to take note of that the Supreme Court of Kenya was not nullified, the first Supreme Court, on the basis of the two-third gender rule. In fact, it was uh, uh, rounded off and actually allowed to sit, uh, even though it had not reached the threshold of two-third gender. So please consider all these, and uh, let's not be, uh, when it is a gender issue, we conveniently can round it off the other way, but not on the other. Senator Newton. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I uh, also stand to uh, give my contribution to the effect that as uh, all those that have spoken before me have said that the matter, the number one, has already been settled and I need not address it, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, about rounding off numbers, this is something that we were taught in the first lessons of numeracy uh, when we went to school. And it is obvious, Mr. Speaker, unless our teachers were very wrong, that we round off to the nearest number. And so, Mr. Speaker, that 1.3 can only be rounded off to that one. And so, uh, Mr. Speaker, I support the argument by the council for the assembly that then the assembly was a properly constituted, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I would want to ask this house not to be invited to an exercise of uh, splitting hairs. We should not be sitting here uh, arguing whether we should uh, round off to uh, the nearest number or not, because that is something, like I've said, that was sorted out many, many years ago uh, during our numeracy lessons, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the issue of validity of uh, the court orders that were issued and that have been cited by uh, the Council for the Governor, Mr. Speaker, the validity has been questioned. And I do not know what then should be done before you make a ruling, but Mr. Speaker, um, this matter is before the Senate. And like those that have spoken before me have said, it is only this House that can determine whether we are going to admit this 
preliminary objections and not you, Mr. Speaker. And so I may want to ask you that you may rule that at the end of it, that we may vote on this matter so that we, we as senators, the members of this jury, may decide whether, by vote, whether this matter should proceed or not. Mr. Speaker, please don't allow yourself to be the one making this, this decision because if it were a committee, like Senator Mogheni has said, Mr. Speaker, you would not be sitting there. This Now, honorable senators, it is now 1.15, and having concluded the business for which I extended the hours of sitting, pursuant to standing order 342A, the Senate stands adjourned until today, 14th 